This is Scott from Optics Realm. It's Monday, June 20th, 2011. I was in a meeting last week and we were talking about doublet fabrication and there's some uh, subtleties, innuendos about fabricating doublets that I kind of wanted to quickly podcast about. First off, I'm not going to talk in detail about the theory behind an acromat and how a doublet works, the color correction, balancing powers. That's for another podcast. I'll cover that much later. So, you know, I've designed dozens upon dozens of uh, doublets and acromats, and there's some interesting things there and how they're fabricated I wanted to get out there. So, just to recall, a doublet or an acromat is typically a positive crown, low dispersion, bonded to a negative flint, a higher dispersion element. Where those two bond together, they have a matched radii. So, nominally, they've got identical radius, and when we tolerance them, each of those tolerances have a double-sided tolerance, say plus or minus a tenth of a percent. That's what gets put on the drawings. When the fabricators go to make it, that's not what they make. They actually bias the radii. And, uh, and why is that? You can have two contact uh, configurations with a doublet. You can have the center at the optical axis, those two elements contacting there, or you can be contacting near the edge. Turns out if you contact at the center, and this should be intuitively obvious for all of those in optics, but if you contact at the center, you're going to get Newton's rings. You're going to get uh, interference there, and you're going to get like a black hole, the technicians call it. That's a bad thing. You don't want that. So the fabricators actually bias the radii of curvature on that bonded interface to ensure an edge contact. It's a subtlety there that I wanted to get out and make people aware of. On top of that, uh, some people, you know, you talk about AR coding, so let me step back. When you go from one optical media to another, from air to glass, you're going to get a Fresnel reflection. And that's typically, that's the, the equation for on axis is the difference between the index of refraction divided by the sum quantity squared. So, in a bonded doublet, you may not want to coat the interfaces that are bonded. We typically use Norlin 61, which is a UV cure adhesive. It's got an index of refraction, a cured index of refraction of 1.56. My company has found that if your flint or your crown has an index above 1.66, now, I remember that as the number of the beast. It's a crazy mnemonic, but that's how I remember 1.66. If the index is above 1.66, we actually do AR code. So if you go through the Fresnel reflection equations for normal incidence, the 1.66 minus 1.56 divided by the sum, quantity squared, you end up with about a tenth of a percent. So for our typical applications, which are machine vision, if you have about a tenth of a percent reflection coefficient and uh, normal incidence, you're going to get ghosting and stray light artifacts. So not, one, one interesting thing on doublet fabrication. The other one is UV, the adhesive is a UV cure. So it, it peaks, its absorption peak is 365 nanometers. It's got an absorption spectra from 320 to 380 nanometers it's usually a good idea to check the transmission of your crown and your flint for that spectral range and it turns out like a like a, a high index low dispersion flint like a shot sf that has a lot of lead in it it doesn't transmit uv well maybe at 365 it might transmit 50 60 percent so it's a good idea to actually cure from the crown side like a typical bk or an sk glass on top of that once you cure it you zap it with your uv gun the the cure isn't fully cured it's going to take weeks to crystallize, crystallize and form a full bond it's a good idea to actually do a full cure either in an oven or with a, a more detailed gun like an, a, a, we call them easy bake ovens. John Daly has a really cool class he teaches through SPIE it's called structural adhesives for optical bonding I highly recommend that he's an expert in this field on top of that I want to talk about uh, thermal issues uh, if you if your doublet goes or acromat goes into an assembly that is going to experience huge temperature ranges you need to be aware that 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 adhesive that could delaminate 
your crown could pop off your flint. Now what causes that? Steep radii cause that and a mismatch in the coefficient of thermal expansion from your crown to your flint. All those are controlled by the lens designer. So lens designers beware when you're doing a doublet you want to keep it a shallow radius. The steeper the radius the more uh, the radius will change when you when you thermally cycle it and also you want your coefficients of expansion to match and it's a good idea to, to check those to the adhesive as well. Uh, that's it for doublet fabrication. Good luck uh, designing and fabricating those doublets. If you need to get a hold of me, you can reach me at opticsrealm.com and I'd love to hear from you. Thank you and good luck.